Hi guys, and welcome back to Scale Studio. Today we're going to finish this Tiger One's interior with hairspray chipping, oil pin washes, and some stain and streaking effects. The best part is that all of these effects cost me less than $20 to create. So, let's save some money and get to work. To start off, we need to spray the coat of dark brown, dark rust, or any rusty color you have on hand. You may notice that I didn't prime the model before I started. Now, that may be because I don't have any primer on hand, but also because it really isn't super necessary, as the brown acts almost as a primer itself. In the future, I may get some, but only for a model with more to it, such as resin, PE, or a turned metal barrel. But since the interior has none of that, I didn't feel like I needed it. Next, I'm going to use this Trace May hairspray. There's nothing special about it. I bought it at my local grocery store. For me, I like to decant it into my airbrush cup because it gives extra control. Some people like to spray it on their models straight from the can. I have tried it that way, but I find it makes too thick of a coat and creates overly large, out of scale chips. I also thin the hairspray down in about a 50-50 ratio, since it reduces the potency of the hairspray and makes application easier not to mess up. Once the base coat is completely dry, we can spray a thin but continuous layer of the diluted hairspray onto the model. I'm going to use the whole ceiling as a demonstration to explain why it needs to be a thin coat. As you can see, I'm going to spray a thin coat on one side and a thick coat on the other. One thing you can probably already see is that the thicker side takes longer to dry, increasing the chance of dust or other contaminants getting into the finish. For the interior, I'm going to use Model Master Ivory. I thinned it in about a 25% paint to 75% water mixture, so I can achieve a very thin but still continuous layer. And as you can probably see, I'm going to apply it in a thin layer, building it up slowly. And if you're wondering, I'm using a Pash VL airbrush with a 1.05 millimeter tip. Here on the turret basket floor, you can see how I slowly build it up with a couple transparent layers.
Even after I was finished, there was a marbled, cloudy effect from the thin coat sprayed on semi-inconsistently. To begin the chipping, I'm going to use this 1 8 inch angular shader and some tap water. Hairspray chipping is super easy, if you set it up correctly. All you do is wet the section you're working on, and then scrub at it with your brush. For reference, this is the side that I sprayed the light coat of hairspray. For those of you who want to know how it works, the water on your brush soaks through the first layer of paint, dissolving the water-soluble hairspray underneath and lifting small chips of paint. Now we're going to do the same thing on the side with the thickly applied hairspray. Again, wetting the surface and then scrubbing at it with the brush. You can see that a thin layer facilitates much finer, more in-scale chips. Now I'm going to use the same process on the rest of the model. After the preliminary chipping is done, I'm going to start painting details. I apologize as I am not the best brush painter, but a pin wash should help cover mistakes.
Once I finish painting the seats and other fabric details, I'm going to dry brush them with this lighter color. Basically, dry brushing is where you wipe almost all of the paint off your brush and lightly swipe at corners and edges on whatever you want to dry brush. This technique can add texture, contrast, and makes the subject look worn and faded. Although it didn't quite succeed this time. I then used Vallejo US Dark Green and Vallejo Chocolate Brown for leather and wood details. And then, since I don't have red, I used Vallejo Light Rust for this button or cap on the fire extinguisher. Okay, those are the turret sides and transmission with all the details painted. Let's move on to the radio rack. First, I'm going to base coat it with Vallejo Dark Sea Gray. Again, I don't use any primers. Then I'm going to be using Vallejo Gloss Black, Ivory, and Chocolate Brown to paint details. I'm using a cheap 10 over zero brush After I finish the instrument panel faces, I redefine the edges with Vallejo Dark Sea Gray.
Next, I'm going to protect the paint job with a coat of Vallejo Satin Varnish. After that, I'm going to start prepping these artist oils for weathering. Some people prefer Ablaitung or Wilder weathering oils, but I find that these work great and are also far cheaper than dedicated weathering oils. I'm going to leave them on the cardboard overnight, which allows the linseed oil to soak out of them, making them dry faster and work better. We're going to start with a pin wash, thinning some burnt sienna down with lacquer thinner. This allows the paint to flow around details, panel lines and corners, highlighting them, and making the tank look used. You can see the effect on the steering assembly. I'm going to apply the wash around all corners, details, and panel lines. Once it's dry, you can clean up the residue with lacquer thinner. You can also make stains or built up grime by blending the wash rather than cleaning it off completely. Even though you do have to clean up around every single detail, the result is very rewarding. For the turret floor, I used a slightly different effect. Instead of cleaning it off completely, I cleaned off some areas and then stippled my brush over the entire section, creating a mottled, rusty, heavily weathered look. Based off of similar items like rusty sewer plates and the like, which receive heavy traffic and weathering, I believe this effect is an easy way to make an ultra-realistic rusty grate. Next, we're going to make some streaking down the sides of the transmission housing. It's also fairly easy. You basically just take unthinned oil paint and draw straight lines down the sides with it. You then just refine them with lacquer thinner and your brush. As you can see, the trick is to work slowly and from both directions, up and down and work from both sides of the streak. This way, you'll get a very straight line down that looks very natural and realistic. I'm also going to make an oily, grimier color from these three colors and apply it in the same way, streaking and also make a little bit of a stain in that corner there.
The streaks look super nasty and very straight, which is perfect. It makes the model look older and more interesting as a whole. Next, I'm going to use that same greasy color as before and apply it as a pin wash. Now, when I tried to add stains to the hole, there were problems with the satin varnish. It lifted and left ugly wrinkles in the finish. If anyone knows why, please leave it in the comments section below. I'd love to figure out why it's doing this. With those final stains done, we are finished. If you had questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section and I will get back to you. If you like this video, please give it a like as it helps me out, and if you want more, click the subscribe button as I post content like this every week. Also, you'll be notified when I release a new video, which ensures that you don't miss out. Next week, we'll work on the engine, periscopes, and gun, so you don't want to miss it. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.